Hello. Last year I made a video where I had a radio control car that was steering itself towards some GPS coordinates that were continuously being updated from a remote transmitter. And the point of that was to have a follow me kind of a feature where the car would just follow after whoever was holding the transmitter. Uh, in this video I'm basically doing exactly the same thing except I'm doing it with this new chassis that I got after I made that video um, because this one has a lot more um, strength in the steering and it's able to keep the straight line a lot better so it has a better ability to keep going in the direction that it should um, so most of this video I'm just going to show the the footage that I took from the Mobius that was stuck under the uh, bottom of this mounting platform here um, and not, none of it's really new I just use mostly the same source code as I had last time with a few little improvements so I'll just play the video for most of this for most of the rest of this video but before that I wanted to point out a couple of things that I did wrong just in the off chance that somebody in the future may benefit from me having made these mistakes um, the first thing that I did wrong was the way I soldered these Arduinos on here or one of them in particular and they're soldered onto a breadboard come on focus there we go so there's a a breadboard shaped or a breadboard styled um, PCB prototype board there and I soldered the Arduinos on there like this and the problem was that I thought it would be clever to I wanted to keep the back side flat completely flat as much as I could so what I did was I put the pin headers in there like this so that they were just poking up well they weren't poking up at all they were just flat so as if it would be if you put it down on the table like that actually there we go like that if I hold the pin header there that's that's how I soldered things on so it seems that I've got a joint that is not actually a properly soldered joint on either the ground or the raw input for the Arduino there so I won't bother demonstrating it now but I found that if I sort of pulled it like that I could get it to turn off and then if I pressed it down it would turn on again um, so try as I might I couldn't manage to fix that solder joint very well and I think the problem is partially because if we can look at it from that direction we'll see that the other Arduino is stopping me from pushing this down and the other problem is that because all of the other pins here are soldered as well I kind of need to heat up the solder on all of them to be able to push it down properly so I'm kind of stuck with that uh, at the moment unless I can maybe think of a clever way to solder it from the top or something but anyway it's not not a super huge problem but what that means is that occasionally when it goes over big bumps the uh, Arduino will reset um, now that wouldn't be such a huge problem um, if it wasn't for the other mistake that I made and I'll just show you a little bit of the source code here this is what the car does when it starts up this is the setup function here so I'm not going to bother with this stuff at the top but what I wanted to show you here was the way I um, organized the compass calibration um, I made it so that if digital pin 7 was held high when it starts up it would calibrate the compass and this calibrate the compass function here uh, it reads in all of the compass values that it's seeing for 30 seconds so in that 30 seconds you're supposed to be you know waving the car around like this and turning it into every angle that it can see for the magnetometer and then it will write those values to the EEPROM and if you are if digital pin 7 is not high when it starts up uh, then it will skip that calibration process and it will load the values from EEPROM instead uh, so the twitch wheels here are just to let me see which one of those things it's doing so this two, 250 is 250 milliseconds uh, so it will go left right left right left right so that's three twitches of 250 milliseconds each and if it's doing the calibrate compass it will do 
two twitches of 750, so two slow twitches or three fast twitches. Uh, so the, the fast twitches, for example, would look like this. Uh, anyway, so the problem here was um, if you're very astute, you may have noticed it already, but this digital read, because I didn't, I didn't pull this down to, I didn't have any pull down resistor or anything on here. Um, did the pin seven was just floating, so it was a little bit random, really. Rather, uh, it was random if I wasn't pulling it high intentionally. So what I would do to pull it high is just have a a little piece of wire and I would just hold it on the VCC and pin 7 like that when I turned the, the power switch on here. Um, so that would give me the, the calibration. Uh, so all I needed to do was either to hold it low when I turned it on or put a pull down resistor there. So the result of that was that for the first half an hour or so of my video that I took the compass wasn't calibrated at all, um, but it still did okay. So what I did is, when I figured out what was going on, I took some more video with the compass calibrated properly, and it performed a lot better. It sort of drove towards me in a straight line most of the time. So I'll just show you the video that that <laughs> that I got after I calibrated the compass. But unfortunately, um, because I'd used so much of my Mobius battery by that time, the the um, Mobius battery just cut out. So the end of the video will be quite abrupt. But anyway, this is the footage that I got. Okay, so I'm just holding the uh, lovely transmitter thing here. And if we get too far away... It'll try and follow us. It's always within about three meters of me so far. It's not not too bad. The problem that you get when the compass is not calibrated is that even though the car knows where you are and where it is, it doesn't take quite the right direction to get to you. So it'll always sort of go generally in the right place, but not quite. And the only reason it stops instead of going around and around in circles is because I've set it to lower the throttle when it gets to within eight meters of me so it just lowers the throttle to the point where it's not high enough to keep moving oh, well. i'll see what it does when i run down there okay ready That's, I think that's full speed, but it's not very fast. Yeah, that's not too bad. Well, I think I trust this enough to take a little ride on my bike a little bit further afield and we'll see what happens. Hey, 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 stop. <laughs> The other thing I changed from last time was to make it so that when it's turning it slows down a little bit 
and when it's pointing closer to the target it speeds up so you can kind of hear the speed changing a little bit when it's um, from when it's pointing directly at me to when it's um, not quite pointing at me so this is a good indication other than visual indication of how um, when it thinks it's pointing at me basically we can tell that from the sound You can see that here when I put some distance between us and then take a big wide turn because there's more distance between the two GPS locations there it's able to calculate a more accurate um, bearing for where it needs to go so you can see at this point it's quite accurately pointing at me until we get close again. When I tried this earlier with the uncalibrated compass, uh, the, the tracking was not good enough for me to trust it trying to go along this road. But now that the compass is calibrated, I thought I'd give it a try, and it turned out to follow the road reasonably well.
there's some pretty big bumps here that caused the problem for that bad solder joint that I showed you just before. So unfortunately we've got a reset here and also unfortunately it decided to do the compass calibration instead of loading it from the EEPROM. It may have just been luck, but it also seemed like it might have been slightly better calibrated that time than it was before. Magnet, isn't it? 